Today I'll do a, a quick tour of the exterior of our RV. I'll start up, let me see, I'll start right at the awning. If you look at the awning pitch, the original awning when I got it was almost flat, but they are adjustable. You can put more pitch on there so you get a better uh, uh, shading on your patio side at the front. One of the first things we put in is a tire pressure monitoring system. The Winnebago View is on a cutaway chassis and it does not offer a built-in tire pressure monitoring system. In the front, we have hydraulic leveling jacks and we put these things on. They're called snap pads and instead of putting blocks underneath, they're really nice to uh, distribute the weight and uh, if you're on soft ground, uh, grass or sand, that will really help. The drawback is it does reduce uh, ground clearance for about an inch. Uh, two quick items is this toe kick light here that comes on when you turn the exterior patio light on and the light under where the stairs are when you open the door. Um, they're actually halogen light bulbs. We did switch them out to LED light bulbs. Hard to believe in 2020 they actually used halogen light bulbs. In this first storage bin, I have some stuff taken out already, but I will show you. I have another one of those motion sensor lights up here. We did put carpeting in here that goes all the way up and all the way through the pass-through. That's the one thing we do like about the Winnebago View is that it is one of the only uh, Mercedes RVs with the full pass-through. So. We got it specifically, or I did anyways, because of the pass-through and we put these fishing rod storage. So this can hold up to four fishing rods and it goes across the other side. I believe it was about seven foot eight, don't quote me on it, but somewhere around there. So you can put full size fishing rods across there. Some uh, tackle boxes. Um, this is where the inverter is. I wish Winnebago would place this somewhere else. Um, if you do use that pass-through, this inverter actually takes up almost half of the pass-through. So it'd be nice if they got this out of here. I think underneath the sink in the void spot would be the uh, best place for it. It's still close to the uh, batteries. This, if you can see here, I don't recall the measurement, but it's only like four inches. But it, it is good for if you have one of those uh, folding mats exterior mats that that will fit up there uh, perfectly so let's move on to the back this is where the uh, generator compartment is it's actually not a compartment it's just a false door this back storage compartment is we put another one of those carpeting back here so things don't slide around we did get one of those small propane tanks Nice to have instead of the uh, one one gallon. These that's refillable, and then of course extra uh, butane tanks. And then up on top, this storage I didn't show last time. Another one of those uh, touchless lights. But behind here, let me close this door. Behind here, I'll remove this. But we have one of those folding tables it fits in here it actually didn't fit in there originally this whole ceiling which is the bottom of the closet on the inside is raised up by I don't know three inches here so this is just glued on glued on there so I raised the floor up so I could specifically fit this table in here and it's on velcro we'll close that underneath the RV starting in 2020 Winnebago did not furnish a sewer hose storage. So I put one of these in and I utilized the factory holes here. It's on with VHB tape. And let me show you under here. Under here, on this side, it's actually attached to this jack and the spare tire mount with stainless steel zip ties. So no other uh, fasteners involved. Zip ties on this side and over on this side we have 
two holes. One was an original, the other one I, I don't remember if it was this one or that one, but I think you can understand. I can't believe they did not have an exterior sewer storage uh, for a price of a motorhome this big. Now, I don't use this anymore because I do have a built-in macerator, but we keep one of those rhino hoses in here, so if the macerator ever does go out, we have backup. Going over on this side, I've already shown you the wet bay where the macerator hose is. Right next to the wet bay, there is a compartment here that most people probably, or many people, do not know that it opens. If you remove two screws on this side from under underneath and two screws from this side, this whole bay door is already on a hinge and it swings up like this. So this is how you access the gray water tank. Now this would be on the uh, 24D and the 24J floor plan. But you can see my aftermarket uh, sea level gauge here. And, or sea level sensor. So this door swings up. I think you could mount other things in here for storage. It's not very thin, but you could probably store a hose or something here. But it is accessible. Going over on this side, I've already removed it, but Normally, this cable would be attached to this door. So the uh, door stays in this position so the slide out doesn't happen to uh, hit it. But when the slide out is in, you can detach this cable and the door will actually swing up further up. So you can get into this compartment here much easier. Now going to this compartment, this is the other side of the pass through. You can see the fishing poles, the other side of the, these here. You can also see I mounted more fishing rod storage here. I can put three more fishing rods here. And of course, we always have to have a Mickey Mouse fishing pole. Uh, the carpet does extend all the way to this side. And I do have one of those collapsible uh, fire pits. It's a fire pit. Uh, um, grill combo we do use it quite a bit so we really enjoy that this pass through turned out to be perfect it's not the um, the size is not terrible it is usable I mean you're limited to what you can put in there but definitely uh, usable so I think it's a good idea very innovative and over on this side this is just where the uh, propane tank is in 2020, they moved the propane tank to this instead of a storage compartment. I did miss, almost miss, these uh, window weep hole covers. If you look closely on the single pane windows all the way around, I have these, these here. These are weep hole covers. Now, it still active, uh, actively works as a weep hole. The uh, water will come out based on how this is designed. With these weep hole covers, what it does is it prevents uh, the wind from blowing inside and the air, I guess, blowing inside through the window. I believe that is it for the tour. Um, I do have some items on the uh, roof, so let's go up to the roof next. So going up to the roof, I won't go all the way, but if you look back here, this is the uh, Max Air Van vent cover in the closed position. If you look way up in the front, way up there, you will see the Max Air in the open position. Um, I do have two 200 watt panels on that side. They are installed uh, without screws. Over on this side, I have the original 100 watt panels. So I have a total of 600 watts. Uh, these panels here, you can see down below, I actually put some uh, corrugated plastic underneath there so the panels don't uh, uh, damage the fiberglass below. have the WeBoost antenna just with VHB tape. And that's really it on the outside. So that's it on the outside so if you have any questions let me know and i'll provide some links as usual down below